All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explained. In this video, we're going to break down the thalamus. Specifically, what role does it play in relaying sensory information to the cortex to be interpreted and processed? So let's dive in. Now, the first thing I want to draw your attention to as we look at this big structure of the brain is how noticeable the thalamus is. By the way, you can use the word thalami because we have two of them, one in each hemisphere. There's a lot of structures of the brain that are really hard to identify because there are no defined borders, right? Just a bunch of neurons clustered together. But with the thalamus, it's really hard to miss, right? You have these two huge masses of gray matter that sit right in the center of the brain. Now, you could also look at thalamus from a different angle, right? This person would be facing towards me. This would be our left hemisphere. And with this angle, we know that the thalamus is sitting right on top of the brainstem. I've often heard of thalamus as called the gateway to the mind because information flows through the brainstem or away from the cortex. It has to flow through the thalamus or at least majority of the information, right? It's kind of that bridge between the cortex and the rest of the body. We'll come back to this visual and this visual as we talk about its functions. Now, there's our next question. What does the thalamus do? Now, this is up for discussion and debate. Now, even though the structure looks very simple and easy, right, these two circles, it's made up of a lot of subregions of nuclei, right? And researchers are still trying to investigate what each structure does. But for our purposes, we're going to focus on four primary functions, right, things that we know it does. But I'm guessing in 5, 10, 15 years from now, I'm sure many of these will get longer and longer and longer. So let's dive in. Now, the first function of the thalamus is what we're going to label as the relay station, right? This is actually what we're going to really focus on today. The majority of information that flows through the brain stem, right, throws through the brain, will flow through the thalamus and then project onto the cortex, right? It's kind of that relay station that goes to and from the brain. Another way to think about the thalamus is that it's involved in attention, right? As we talked about our introduction, right? This is kind of the filter. I want you to think about how much sensory information right, we receive on a daily basis, right? Vision, sound, audio, right, all that kind of stuff. You're bombarded with information and it's information overload, right? Your brain can't pay attention to all that information. It must prioritize what it should focus on. And we know along with the prefrontal cortex, the thalamus plays a big role in deciding what we should focus on. Right, just imagine you're in a big crowd of room having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody and there's a lot of background noise. You're able to focus on this conversation and filter out everything else. Your thalamus plays a role in that. All right, so we have real estation, we have attention. What are some other roles? We also know the thalamus plays a role in, actually change, there we go, let's use a different color, consciousness, okay, consciousness. Okay, what do we know about consciousness? What we mean by consciousness is being awake and alert, right? If you damage your thalamus, that can actually make you go into a coma, okay, a vegetative state. And we've also seen case studies where if you stimulate this region, right, electrically stimulate this region, you could actually have some more wakefulness, right? Somebody could wake up or, or become more aware of their world after being in a coma or a different vegetative state, okay? So that's how we know consciousness plays a big role. And then lastly, we know it plays a role in sleep, okay? Now, there's a lot of parts of the brain that evolved in sleep, and one of them is the reticular formation or the reticular activating system, and that flows through the brainstem. And all this information is gonna flow up, ascend, through the thalamus, up to the cortex. And this is gonna make you aware, it's gonna make you wake up in the morning, it's gonna make you alert, and that's how we know this plays a vital role. So there's our big four, relay station, attention, consciousness, and sleep. Now, what we're going to focus on in this video is specifically number one, which is our relay station. And what we mean by this is our sensory pathways. Let's go over our sensory pathways. We have our auditory pathway. We have our somatosensory pathway, right, tactile information. We have our visual pathway and our gustatory pathway, right? How does information ascend flow through the nervous system, right? And how does it receive by the thalamus and project onto the cortex? Now, notice there's one sense missing. Do you notice which one's missing? Our sense of smell, our olfactory system. Why is that? We'll focus on why that is missing at the end of this video, okay? All right, let's start with the first one. Let's start with hearing. So how does information enter our ear and how does it receive by the thalamus and then where does it go from there? Well, the first thing I want you to understand is you're actually not hearing my words. I know that might sound confusing. What you're hearing are sound waves, right? Your ears are picking up sound waves. And these sound waves are being picked up by your pinna, 
They're being funneled through through your auditory canal, right through your tympanic membrane, and eventually they'll reach a part like the snail-like structure called the cochlea. And this is where sound waves convert into action potentials or electrical impulses. And this information is going to travel through the auditory nerve, right here, through the brainstem. And once it gets to the brainstem, what's going to happen? Well, we've talked about this in other videos, that a lot of information is going to travel to the opposing or opposite side of the hemisphere, right? So everything happens in this hand will be processed by this hemisphere. Everything in this hand will be processed by this hemisphere. Everything's crisscross, right? So this information is going to travel over here, where it's going to synapse with a, another neuron, okay, on this side. And this information is going to flow through the brain, right? This is the cerebellum on the back side, through the thalamus, okay? Through the thalamus. Specifically, a part called the medial geniculate nucleus. You might hear terms like medial or lateral or anterior, posterior in science or psychology. And what that's referring to is the location, right? Medial means towards the middle and lateral means away from middle. Okay. All right, so where does this information go? How are we actually going to process sound? Well, this is going to stand us with another neuron, and this is going to flow through our auditory cortex. Okay, our auditory cortex. There we go, our AC. Okay? And this is what's going to process what we hear. Right? This is going to let you know that you're speaking words or that you're hearing uh, music, right? that you're hearing somebody's language. Right? This is our auditory cortex. And we'll kind of shade this in so we know what we are looking at. There's your auditory cortex. Okay? All right, so there's our auditory pathway. The next one, our most dominant sense, is our visual pathway, okay, which is right here. And instead of sound waves, what, what energy are we taking in? What we're taking in are light waves, whether it is you know, shorter light waves, like the color blue, or longer waves, like the color red. Okay? And that's going through your pupil and your iris and your lens, and eventually it's going to reach a part of your eye called the retina. Right? This is where information is converted to action potentials, just like our auditory nerve. This is our optic nerve. Now, instead of using this angle, we're actually going to focus on this diagram because the eye doesn't go through the brainstem, right? because the eye would be up here. So how would this work? Well, just like we just said, information uh, you know, flows through the eye, through the retina, which is in the back of the eye. That information is going to flow through the optic nerve to the thalamus, like the majority of our senses. Now, the auditory system is the medial geniculate nucleus. What is vision? This would be, if I kind of do a little back here, the lateral geniculate nucleus. So we have the MGN and the LGN. A nice way to think about it is M for music, right, hearing, and L for light. M for music, L for light. There we go. And where is this going to go? Well, we have to process what we see. So this is going to synapse with another neuron and go to our visual cortex, which is in the back of the head. Okay? And this is located where? Let's think about our lobes. This would be our occipital lobe, right? We have different lobes, right? We have our frontal, our parietal, our temporal, and our occipital lobe. Okay, so there would be vision. So we have our auditory pathway, we have our visual pathway. What's next? Let's talk about our somatosensory pathway, our sense of touch. Now, there's two things I want you to think about. There are two different sensory receptors. There are some that sit right underneath the skin, picking up things like, you know, uh, pressure and vibrations and uh, hot and cold and, uh, you know, pain, that type of thing, right? So these would be, you know, more on, on the surface. You also have sensory receptors attached to your muscles. So let's say this is the muscle in your arm. And these are called proprioceptors, okay? These are called proprioceptors. So imagine, right, these are your muscles, ligaments, and joints. So imagine you're moving your arm, right? You do it, you're working out, right? You're doing hardcore, right? You're doing this. Well, that information has also got to be received by your brain. Or you can imagine, I don't know, that a, you know, a fly lands on your arm. So you can think about a fly or you move your muscles, it's all the same. And this information is going to flow through the autonomic nervous system to our central nervous system, autonomic to our central. And just like hearing, it's going to cross over and synapse with another neuron, Okay, another neuron, and that's going to flow as well up, up, up our brain to our, there we go, right, to our thalamus, okay? Now, where does it go from there? Well, the question is, where is our somatory system? Where is our somatosensory cortex? Right in our parietal lobe. So that's going to synapse with another neuron, and that's going to synapse with our, where? Somatosensory cortex, right? How cool is that? And that is a huge area. Right? This is going to have things like you know, our, our, our skin, our toe, our knee, our lips. Right? All the things that make us sensitive is going to be in our 
cortex. So if I kind of shade it, all of this represents our sensory cortex. Okay, and your arm would, of course, be somewhere around there. Okay, so there's our auditory system, our visual system, our visual pathway, our somatosensory pathway. What's left? Our gustatory pathway, right? This is our sense of taste. Now, take a look at these little bumps. A lot of people think those bumps are your taste buds, but they're not. These are your papillae or your papillae. Okay, and we look at it at this angle, you know, looking at it from uh, uh, this side, is that your taste buds are located in between your papillae, in, in between these grooves. Okay, and saliva helps break down food, so all those taste buds could be activated. And these taste buds are connected to taste receptors. Okay, taste receptors. You know, you got to taste the food. You got to have flavor. Well, that information's got to go through not just the brainstem first, but the cranial nerves, different facial nerves, right? Because it's in the middle. And that information is going to flow through the brainstem, right? It's going to synapse with another neuron through the thalamus right here. And then it's going to synapse with another neuron. Now, the question is, where is taste processed? Let's take a look. In our gustatory cortex, which is right here, okay? Now, where is this located? Well, if we see this little line right here, right? This is what divides the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe and temporal lobe. This is called the lateral sulcus. And if you kind of rip it open, okay, you rip it open, you're going to see this large kind of deep indentation in the brain. This is where our gustatory is located, right? This is what processes things like taste and flavor, right? Your tongue doesn't know you're eating a hamburger. It's not until it goes to this area that you can perceive it as a hamburger, okay? So there's our four systems, our four pathways. So here's the question. What's missing? What's missing is our olfactory system, our olfactory pathway. Now, why is that missing? It is the only one of our five senses that bypasses the thalamus. Why is that? Well, there's some evolutionary theories of why that is. One of them is that it's our oldest, most dominant sense. And such that millions of years ago, we didn't really have a lot of these structures, right? It wasn't really developed yet. Another reason it might be more advantageous for our smell to go straight to our limbic system right? Smell and memory and, and, and emotion, right? We can make quicker decisions. So that would be an evolutionary reason why olfactory system bypasses the thalamus. Really interesting stuff. Here are our different systems. All right, guys, thanks for watching. As I said before, the thalamus is a really complex structure. And I wonder in 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, what else we'll learn and what other functions I'll need to add. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.